Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial and today we are painting Putrid Blight Kings. Yes, here they are. These are part of the Full Goths Shudderhood box. The Games Workshop sent me early to build up and paint for all of you very kindly and that is exactly what we're doing today. We're going to be painting these up in the same style as they are on the front of the box, not necessarily on the back of the box. If you want to see more of that kind of slightly warmer green armor you can check out the death guard videos that we've done here that is pretty much the only replacement here uh, for these guys but otherwise we're going to jump in and we're going to start painting these they've been primed in gray sear and we'll be working on all four of these at once we've already done one but we'll be working on all four of these because they've all got something unique and that's exactly what we're going to be doing when we get to them so for the m most of it we're going to be working on him he's the leader uh, but when we get to things like the banner and the bell and that kind of insectoid arm we will pick those out as and when we get to them so the color we're going to be using first is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and gut ripper flesh i'm going to be applying this over the top of all of the putrid blight kings skin so i'm just going to start just under here i would recommend having some sort of pictorial reference next to you as you do this so you can just see what is skin and what is not so for example on this guy all of that there is skin but at times it can look a little bit like armor or it can look or armor can look like skin so this is just worth having them open just to see where you should put the colors. So for example, just here on his leg, I can't tell if that's trousers or not. So I will look at the picture for that. I'm inclined to believe that it is flesh, but we shall see. So with that done, turns out they weren't trousers, it was skin. So what we're gonna do, whilst we're waiting for it to dry on all four of our guys, we're gonna take some Militarum Green and we're gonna apply this over the top of any cloth that we have scattered around the miniatures. So with that all done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Black Legion and Contrast Medium. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of the armor panels. Now this might seem a little bit weird because when it comes out, it looks almost like a cross between Basilicanum Grey and Rattling Grime. However, Black Legion is a paint that just flows so nicely, even once it's thinned down. You can kind of predict it and work with it a little bit more. And don't worry, this armor's not going to be grey for too long. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Pterodon Turquoise and we're going to apply this over the top of all of that armor.
And so with that all done, we're then going to take some Garagax sewer and we're going to apply this to all of his leather details. I'm going to start up here on the on the back strap. So with that now done, we're going, to, we're going to add a little bit of extra colouring to all that skin. And the colour we're going to be using is a roughly three parts Lamia medium to one part pox walker. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of the green flesh. So with that now drying, we're going to take some Creed camo and we're going to apply this over top of all of their cloth because we just want to take that down just a little bit. And so with that now done, we're going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of any wood that we have. So we've got generally like the handles of axes and things like that. But there is the occasional little bit of extra wood, for example, on our instrument. There's this, the, big, the big stick. So we're going to be applying this Black Legion all over. Just like this. So with that done, this is where we're at with all four of our guys. And it's at this point where things are gonna deviate slightly. So we have to kind of pick out some specific details for each of them. There are some similarities and consistencies, but it's at this point where we're going to go through them one by one before we do the metallics. The metallics will all be the same, but for these guys, we've got a few other extra details. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking some Volupus Pink. And on this guy, the leader, what we're going to do is we're going to apply this inside the largest little boils and wounds and things like that. It's where he's got kind of large open sores. Like that sort of thing. But additionally on this guy, what we're also going to do is gonna add a little bit of bruising around his tummy. So we're gonna load up the brush with some Volupus Pink. I'm going to pick a place to start and I'm going to start just under here, I think. Yes. And I'm going to apply this like this in quite a rough way. I'm not looking for specific. And we're going to wash the brush and then with a clean brush, we're going to pick up 
by kind of blending it out and stippling the brush around most of the Volupus pink. Now like that. We're also going to then take it around here, give a little bit more than that. There we go. Then we're going to wash the brush once more. And I'm going to stipple it out and blend it into the skin. Like that. And we just got a little bit more to do. Just around here. We don't need to do any blending there. And with that done, on this dude, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of the teeth around his belly. like that and we're also going to apply this inside his mouth and over his eye and with that done we're then going to take some dark oath flesh i'm going to apply this over the top of the large tentacled tum tum I mean, I guess it is on his tongue, <laughs> but it is a tongue and a tentacle and all those things. So whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take two colours, snake bite leather and gore grunter fur, and we're going to apply this over the top of his two horns. Now, the first one we're going to use is snake bite leather, and we're going to apply this over the top of the horn, just here. On his shoulder. Like that. We're then going to wash the brush and then we're going to grab some gore grunter fur. I'm going to apply this towards the tip like so. Then I'm going to wash the brush and then we're just going to smooth those paints together. Like that sort of thing. Then, on the one on his head, we're going to take Gorgon to fur first. I'm going to apply this over the top of the whole of that horn, like so, down to where it meets his skin. Like this. And then, we're going to wash the brush going to absorb the paint where it meets the skull like 
like that. Let me wash the brush one more time. Grab a little bit of snake bite leather. And then we're just gonna apply this towards the tip. And so whilst we're waiting for those horns to dry, we're gonna grab some Griff Charger Gray. I'm gonna apply this over the shrunken head, just in here. Like that. Whilst we're waiting for him to dry, I'm going to move on to our next one, which is going to be this guy. And the colour we're going to be using for him first is snake bite leather. And we're applying this over the top of his helmet horns and the spikes sticking out of his arm. And with that done, we're then going to once again take some Volupus Pink and we're going to apply this inside the little skin tears. And so with that applied, we're then gonna take some Nasdrag yellow, not very much here, and we're gonna do a little bit of blending around his leg. So we're gonna apply some of it kind of like this in a patch. I'm gonna wash the brush. And then we're just gonna kind of pull off most of it, like that. Do some more just here. Wash the brush. And then round on the back and do the same thing in this area. Wash the brush. And then just pull most of it off like that. So with that done, we can pop these two to one side and we can pick up our next guy, which is going to be Flyman. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off nice and simply by taking some snake bite leather and we're going to apply this over the top of all of his horns and whatnot, including his fly arm. So with that done, whilst we're waiting for it to dry, we're going to grab some Agrax Earthshade and we're going to apply this over the top of his rope belt and the skull.
So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Saigor Brown mix. And firstly, we're just going to apply this over the top of the horns on his head. And on his shoulder. Like that. We'll do the shoulder ones a little bit later, but what we're going to do on the fly arm is we're going to apply this over the fly arm. I'm going to bring it down to around about there. Wash the brush. And then just pull the brush through it towards the tip up to around about the halfway mark. Like that, so it gets a nice fade. And then you'll want to quickly come in and do the underside. like that sort of thing and then we'll do the other one and with that done we're still drying at the moment but what we're going to do is we're going to take some Volupa's pink and we're going to apply this inside his little saw just here there isn't too many of these on this guy yeah, it's just that one on the arm. But what we're also going to do is around the kind of... rim of the helmet onto the... fly mandibles. We're just going to add a little tiny bit of it in there. Make it look horrible. Oh, we do have another little saw just behind here. Don't want to miss that. So with that done, that's another one in the bag. So we're just going to pop them to one side and we're going to move on to this guy. And once again, we're going to take some Volupus pink. And we're going to apply this inside his little saws. It might seem like this one could have been done as a generic coat, but we have a, had a couple of little differences and Just makes sense to me. Just gonna apply this like this, nice and carefully, and then we'll come back. And with that done, we're then gonna take some Gore Grunter fur, and we're gonna apply this over the horns on his helmet. So that done, all of our putrid blight kings are now at roughly the same level. So what we're going to do is we're going to move back to doing generic coats because now we're going to be doing the metallics and the first thing we're going to do is quite simply to take some lead belcher and we're going to apply this over the top of everything that's metallic it doesn't matter if it's going to be a different color some of it is definitely going to be a different color but we're just going to apply this over everything that's going to be metallic for now just so that we get a good sense of where it all is and also it performs, it performs a nice kind of foundation for any different colors so we're going to apply this just like this, over any sword blades, armor spikes and adornments, the banner, the bell, chains, chain mail, all that good stuff. And then once that's done, we'll come back.
And so with that done, we're then gonna take some thinned down Roulord brass. And we're gonna apply this over all the areas you want to be a different metallic color. So for example, over the top of the cross guard and the skull on this guy's sword. Over the top of the banner pole, the bells. All of that good stuff, just like that sort of thing. And as an example, I've already done it. We've done this on the Bellman. And here on the Banner Boy. Just as an example. So with that now done, all of our base coats are on across the Putrid Blight King. So what we're going to do is we're gonna add some shades. Now, the first one we're going to add is nice and simple. It's going to be some Agrax Surf Shade. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of our metals. So all the rainbow or brass, all the silver. Just like this sort of thing. And so with that done, the only other shade we need to apply across all of them is some Berserker Blood Shade. And that is gonna be over the top of this guy's tentacle, tummy tongue thing. We tripped over that last time and we tripped over it again. Like that, I'm just gonna add a little bit of this to all that bruising around the teeth areas. And that just to make it look a little bit more bruised. And so with that, our putrid blight kings are now at what I would call a war hipster battle ready, and they look pretty cool. However, we're not gonna leave them there, no. Of course not, we're gonna take them to the next level, and we're gonna do this by adding some layers and some highlights. And the first one we're going to add, and this is fairly consistent across all of them, but again, we will get to when we have specific highlights that we need to do, if we need to do them. Um, we will get to them as we get to them. But consistently across the rest of them, all of them, I should say, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron rack skin. I'm going to use this to effectively relayer the flesh, just avoiding any of the deepest parts where all of our shading and colouring has settled. So we're looking to brighten them up, make them look nice and pale. We don't need to go too close to our bruised areas on this guy. However, once you do start approaching it, you can just add a couple of little highlights going in there, like that sort of thing. to kind of blend it all together. And so with that all done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some deep kin flesh. 
I'm going to use this to pick out the sharpest and most prominent bits, such as the warts and things. So with that done, the green skin is all finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Cabalite green. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of the armor. And with all that Cabalite green applied, we're then going to take some Cyberite green. I'm going to apply this again to the sharpest points, such as any little rivets and corners. Around the armor. So with that now done, we can move on. I'm gonna move on to all the black details. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some storm vermin fur. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of them. So we're looking at things like the teeth here, the wood, and things like the staff, and the standard and the large instrument. generally just all black details. So with that done, aside from all of the metallics, we've got our kind of generic highlights going on. And so what we're going to do is we're, once again, we're going to go with the same format of we're going to highlight everything we need to on each individual one, and then we'll come back for doing the metallics. So. On that note, we're going to continue with this guy, just as we did before. And the colour we're going to be using is some Tau Light Okra. Now, some of these highlights are going to be the same. You don't need to worry too much about that. But we do just want to show each one off. So we're going to use this Tau Light Okra now to just pick out the edges on his horns. So with that done, we're then going to take a small amount of Flash Gits Yellow and we're going to apply this on either corner of the eye. And so with that done, we're then going to take a little bit of Kislev Flesh. I'm going to add this to the sharpest point on our horn. 
like that sort of thing. Same over here. And we're going to use this to pick out boils and edges on the tentacle. And so with that done, we're then going to take a little bit of black Templar. I'm going to apply this over the stitching on the shrunken head. So with that done, this guy's all highlighted. So I'm going to pop them to one side and we're going to pick up this one. And the colour we're going to be using is, once again, some thinned down towel light okra. I'm going to use this to highlight his horns. And so with that done, we're then going to take a little bit of Ungor Flesh. I'm going to apply this to the sharpest points of his horns. So with that now done, we're going to move on to our next one because he's now got his individual highlights and we're going to now work on Flyman and the colour we're going to be using first is some Steel Legion Drab. I'm going to be using this to highlight all of his horns including his fly arm And so with that done, we're then going to take some Karak Stone. I'm going to use this to pick out the sharpest points in all of his horns, including on the fly arm. And so with that now done, we can pop him to one side and we can gather up our last one here. And we're going to take some thinned down Deathclaw Brown. I'm going to use this to highlight the horns. So with that done, what we're now going to do on this gentleman is we're going to take some Gore Grunt of Fur. And we're going to apply this to the tabard, but we're not going to like apply this all over. Instead, what we're going to do is going to stipple it up. So we're going to load up the brush with some Gore Grunt of Fur. And then we're just going to start applying this towards the bottom. We're going to bring it up to around about there, like that. Then we're going to wash the brush. And then we're going to once again stipple in like that 
And then we're going to once more wash the brush. And then just towards the top, we're going to stipple it. Like that. And if you want to, you can always grab a little bit more and apply it towards the bottom. You can do as much or as little of this as you like. So with that done, we're then going to take some Strachan Green. We'll use this to highlight all of that tabard. So that done, all of our kind of specific highlights are now finished. So it is time to work on the metallics. And the first one we're gonna add is some Roulord brass once again. And what we're looking to do here is, particularly on these two gentlemen, is we're looking to brighten up those large areas of brass. <laughs> so we're gonna take that Roulord brass and on the banner for example we're just going to start relayering it just like this now we're going to avoid any of the recesses and this doesn't have to be a hundred percent perfect either I'm just going to do things like that. I'm going to do the same thing up here as well. Like so. And then on the back, we'll also do a little bit of relayering. As you can see, I'm not being too thorough here. It doesn't need to be. Just like that. There we go. I'm not gonna worry about any of the rest of his brassy details. That's fine. Same on the bell, we're gonna do the same thing. So over here, we're just going to, on the main body of the bell, relayer in quite roughly. Like that. So with that Rune Lord Brass applied over there, what we're now gonna do is to all of the silver and to those Rune Lord Brassy bits, don't worry, we will show you, but to the silver and to the Rune Lord Brassy bits, we're gonna take Gore Grunter Fur once more. And we've already done this on the tabard, but what we're going to do is we're going to take the Gore Grunter fur and we're just going to stipple in some rust now. So, for example, here on this blade, we're just going to apply Gore Grunter fur there and we'll apply it there as well. Why not? Then we'll wash the brush and then we're going to come in. and just kind of move it around, blend it out, and stipple away at it to remove most of it. And obviously the more you leave on, the darker and pitted it looks, but we're just gonna add a little bit more here. And that's all of that. Wash the brush. Like that. On the axe blade, we do the same thing. Do that like that. Wash the brush. And now the rain comes. 
Sigmar is finally displeased. You can obviously keep doing layers like this if you want to add a little bit more darkness and dirt in there. We can pop him to one side though for the moment and we can revisit him. I'm going to do the same thing along this guy's sword, but we're also going to add some of this into his chainmail. So we're just going to add a little bit like this. You don't really have to come in and kind of re stipple those, that's usually fine. A little bit more here. Just like that sort of thing. And then on the sword blade, once again. I'm gonna keep it towards the base of that blade there, I think. If you go really heavy, for example, just grab a load of it. It comes out really dark like that. do things like create like a kind of gradual fade by sort of blending it out so that sort of thing same again over here we're gonna do is gonna take the gore grunt of fur and then just once again we're gonna add little patches of it so we're gonna start down here I'm actually gonna just apply this over the top of the entire thing like that gonna wash the brush Wash the brush. Wash the brush. Brush washing simulator. Can't ask for fairer than that. There we go. That's nice. So we're going to add a little bit more. Just in this top corner, I think. I want it to be a little bit heavier, though, so I'm going to wash the brush. I'm not going to stipple quite as much of it away. There we go. And again, can add just a little few spots of this into the chain mail down there. I'm going to add some of this around the spikes. To create little islands of corruption. We do still want to get in there and just move it around, smooth it out. So it doesn't just look like hard blobs. See, like kind of like a creeping rust, that's the sort of thing we're going for. <laughs> I'm going to come around the back here. Again, we're going to apply this over the top of that chain because we've rusted it up on that side. Wash the brush.
It's fun to be messy, isn't it? Good old Nurgle. There we go. So that's him now. Done. And so we just got one last guy, and that is our bellboy. And again, just gonna do the same things here. Shouldn't be too surprising by now. Add the Gorgrunt affair. Like that. Wash. And then stipple it off. Smooth it out and redistribute it. So with that all done, they're now looking gorgeously rusty. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take some scrag brown and a small dry brush. We're gonna add a little bit more of kind of a textured rust in there. So on these sections, what you wanna do is you just wanna come in there and just in a circular motion, build up. Some rust. Just like that. Similarly on things like this guy here. And what this does is it just makes it lose any kind of pretense of being shiny whilst really reinforcing the orange nature but it doesn't really need very much like that. As long as you don't fully coat these areas, you've got rust meeting dirt. Just holding on to the bell for the moment so it doesn't ping off. And finally, just to finish them all off, what we're going to do is we're going to take some iron breaker I'm going to gently dry brush this over the edges of things like sword blades. Like that. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to dry brush this over the top of the battle standard. Add a little bit of it to our rusty areas. So there's still some of that metal in there, despite having taken most of it off. And you don't want these to be too clean. That's the thing. OK, 
can even stipple a little bit of this if you want to. So for example, just there like that. Love to do. Once we've done this step, is to base them in the same style as the rest of your army. And here we have it then, our bases are complete and so are the Putrid Blight Kings. I really like this scheme. I prefer it much more to like the warm green armor version, the kind of more death guardy armor. I really liked this from Full Goth Shudderhood. And we finally have Putrid Blight Kings on the channel. That's one that I think a lot of people have asked for for a while. So here we have it. Awesome stuff, right? And they go really well with our new Harbinger of Decay. <laughs> Nurgle things. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you'd like to support me further, you absolutely can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster just like these bosses have done scrolling up on the screen before you whose continued support helps me continue to make all the wonderful content that you enjoy alternatively you could become a youtube channel member by clicking on the join button on the channel page or just below this video like these wonderful amazing people have done and if you really like this video and you just want to shoot me a little thanks you can click on the thanks button just below this video don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.